Okay, so right, they brought the it worked. Where they brought the they brought the, the the girls that just will do anything you want and strip in front of you. Nothing it worked really. for somebody, so they brought that. Basically, my right? the, the Asian look like my wife really in the tub. No, I didn't right? even they, know. They brought that. I meant to record my class because I didn't want to pay right. attention. And just ask, okay, well, now we need a blonde with blue eyes I'm gonna rewatch it, to, 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 to role play I had Martin. A... And I had they, oh, a blonde hair blonde. I'm like, uh, they don't know that I remember things that I, that I can communicate. So can you just pretend like I'm like I'm as dumb as they're telling you I am? Because I got questions for you. Right. But, uh, you, uh, yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, and the, the girls are like, fuck. And so then another girl comes, you know, so that, that blonde, you know, you know, ended up call, calling some, some family, friends or whatever and out of the situation. And then another girl comes. This is escalating. They bring a, a girl, they took her clothes off. She had nothing but a shirt on and, and, and a short shirt. So her vagina and her butt, her butt was visible. No pain. They stripped her before they brought her into my room. I think I got fucking armed military men at the door, stripping a girl, and then put, putting her in the room with me. And, and um, God, that's nuts. She's, she's like, I'm, I'm yours for the night. I will do whatever you ask with whoever you ask, as many people as you ask, whatever, with whatever you ask. And I, I just looked at her, and I'm just like, um, you, you, I hand her my phone. I'm like, call your mom. She's like, why? I'm like, do you know me? She's like, nope. But do you want to have sex with me? She's like, not really. I'm like, that's good because I don't want to touch you either. It's like, matter of fact, you're, you, this was a scam. You're not actually here to have sex with me. Your mom was looking for you. And now that we found you, can you call her? And the girl just started crying. What do you mean my mom's looking for me? I'm like, yeah, your family's looking for you. They didn't know how to get a hold of you. It's my fucking job. Like, right. When was the last time you spoke to your family? She's like, yeah, they're looking for they're great. Yeah. This makes sense. I'm like, okay, can you call? Can you call? Okay, you call your mom. You get the get make a phone call. You make a phone call. Just, here's my address. You tell me where you're at. Now I'm about to be hurt really bad, so that you can leave. But I promise I'll get better. Man, you really are something else, Martin. I gotta say, man. So they brought they brought my neighbor girl over. So then it escalates to my neighbor girls, and they rip the bikinis off of them, and they throw them in my son's old bedroom with a built-in desk. And um, they strip her, and they they strip the girl, and they throw her in my my my, my son's room. And uh, you know. Heck, we're gonna kill your wife if you can't get hard and have sex with this girl, Martin. We're gonna kill your kids. Like it's like some they try to associate that kind of psychology attached to violence, so that eventually you'll 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 want to do that stuff. They yeah, try to you'll, create, yeah. You know what I mean? Sexual gratification with violence. They try to they try to create that in you. Mm -hmm. And especially, so, it's weird. Like, um, just biologically, like it's it. Those two are somewhat related like violence so, and so, sex. so they, they, they rip blue they strip the girl and they tell her to lay down on her on her back spread eagle so i can get on top of her and I, I i put my hands over her shoulders and i just tell her scream and say that's my butt she's like looking at me all shocked i'm like trust me they're men so Bill. yeah, so she's like, ah, my butt, literally, and the and the and the and the guy hit me in the head. This guy doesn't even know where to put his dick. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, no, put your clothes on. And the next morning, Matt, I think it was Matt. I'm not really sure. It's the the FBI. They they had her tied up in my room again. From you know, when you hear their conversations, they're going to try and force her to have sex with me again. And at that, I, I like I'm gonna make a make a big ruckus. I'm gonna get hurt really bad, but you'll get away, and I'll get better. Yeah. What, what was that? Then they had a. Uh, they took my wife somewhere, and they thought I was knocked out. 
and another kid just wanted to hide and, and listen to the military. He came to my house to listen and they showed up and I'm like, kid, I'm not knocked out. He's like taking pictures of me. Like I'm knocked out. I'm like, I'm not knocked out. Like, he's like, damn. I'm like, yeah, yeah. but you, you, you don't, you, you got to get out of here. Like you can't fucking be here. And they right. fucking pull, they pull in the driveway. They pull in the driveway. And uh, the, I got a hallway right here. They, they, they pull, pull, pull in the driveway. Guy comes in, comes in with my wife. I got a, I got the kid. And I tell him, stand in that hallway right there at that door right here. I'm standing here, standing right here. I tell the kids, stand right here. You stand right here. You hear me do that. I'm coming through that door. You hear footsteps. I'm coming through this door. We're going to play carousel. Boop, boop, boop. Right. You're my AI. Boop, boop, boop. We're going to play carousel. Carousel? I'm like, yeah, like a merry-go-round. We're going to go in a circle here. And like we're, but we got to go fast. Like carousel. They're coming in the door. They're coming up the, walking up the steps. It's got to be fucking fast. We're going to do carousel. Yeah, literally comes in the guy calls calls like we're gonna have a gang bang and a rape tonight like and the kid's like okay you know as soon as i make the noise you fucking do the carousel he literally um the guy was so interested in calling and bragging to his friends about gang bangs and rape that um he didn't even check to see if anybody had come in the house as, you think as a military like situation where it didn't fucking check didn't do anything park park the victim that he was preparing for a rape uh, 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 and um, we did the thing, and the guy, the kid, snuck out the fucking door. Yeah, because he was so confident in that everything was gonna go like it normally does. I don't need to check for shit. I, so I think like every time you guys come, you bring kids, but more importantly, other kids show up. That you have been trained to to not recognize, to not real like your training. So I'm looking at these guys like you were trained to bring children for rape without, while also being trained to not check. Uh, like you know, you go into a room, you check door to door, you check it. Like you were trained to no longer do that in the presence of your, like your psychology. You have training. Any other time, you you check the room, you clear the room, you clear the building. But when you're thinking about sex and rape. You, like somebody trained you to turn that off so that you could be monitored. That doesn't like, I'm like, look at these, like you guys don't even have the, like you clear a fucking room in a building military, like fucking all, all T's are crossed. All eyes are dotted. No, nothing is left unchecked when children and women are involved in sexual gratification. Your training has been, you have been trained to turn your training off. Mm -hmm. they, like who trained you to turn your training off? Right. Yeah. The same people that led you to those situations in the first place. Who trained you to turn your training off? Yeah. Another, another, another kid fucking show up. Want to know what the military's doing to my sliding glass door? Like hop the fence from the woods. And, you know, I don't know, like to come in. I don't know. Like, I don't know to tell them to run out the door or nothing. So have them stand behind the refrigerator. Go behind the fridge, suck your gut in. Just, uh, we'll get you out as, as soon as I can. And the military men uh, start brutally raping and torturing a woman right here. She's screaming for her life. I can't breathe. The guy going, "Yep, yeah, yeah, she's fucking went unconscious. Can you get uh, can you get ice water to wake her up? We knocked her out. And so the kid has to listen to the guy come over here to get ice water. To, oh man! To, to wake up his rape victim because he doesn't get a boner if they're not fighting. And I, man, I, I don't, I don't really know what transpired, but um, they had to come get his body up from right there. Whoa! What? And the kid got out. Right for that kid to escape, for that kid to get out of the house, because. Sometimes kids make noises. Yeah. Oh, man. 
Sometimes they're quiet as a mouse. Sometimes they stir. Not as that kid. Ow, 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 ow. And you're like, there's you guys again. You guys are bringing people to be raped, inviting people over to rape. And there's kids that you have been fucking trained to not actually check the building anymore. Like you were trained to know, like once we have the rape victims, our training turns off and we just all gratify, all pleasure, all carnal temptations. It's all about the drugs, the partying and the torture, whatever you're focused on. Okay. Pretty, pretty interesting. Yeah. Because you, you got to think how many times would that have had to occur for that training of not training set in. There's another time some kids hiding in there while they're beat, literally threatening to murder me so my wife will have sex with somebody. These some kids listen to that. Biggie, I will murder I will I will murder you if you don't have sex with this person. I will murder your wife if you don't have sex with this person. And then you get to hear the violence. Like, you know, you're behind a wall, all you can hear is the blows, the screams, the smell of the blood. I had a freak out and the sheriff showed up and with a little boy right here I to show the little boy I'm going to talk about the shit that you've been witnessing over the days and so the sheriff my neighbors are sex trafficking my fucking wife you guys have been coming here and participating for years and starting me over there's a fucking kid on the floor right now listen to me tell you this and the sheriff goes don't worry we're going to finally fix it in front of the kid. Don't worry, we're going to finally fix it. And I'm just, just, that kid now is going to grow up. And I said, eventually he's going to come across my YouTube and go, they still haven't given his fucking kids back? Right. Mm -hmm. They're still fucking torturing him and his wife? The sheriff. So now that kid goes, now that kid. Yes, sheriff, I trust you. Yep, thank you, sheriff. Yep, I'm, yep. I'm, everybody, the sheriff's is greatest. Hey, Biggie, I watched the sheriff's fucking sex traffic somebody. They actually let me participate in rape. The sheriffs had me rape somebody. It's okay. Oh we can rape anybody we want. I, I, I saw the sheriffs do it. I sh and the sheriff was doing it because he learned it from the military. The military were raping. So then the sheriff started raping. Then they let me rape. Do you want to rape Biggie? It's the, that's what he, it's what heroes do. Oh man. So it can even spread that way to just, Oh man! Sheriff, yeah, oh, we're gonna insane. fix it. I'm like, now there's I got an African American neighbor that just moved in or whatever, trying to part like, t you know, I'm like, my wife is being fucking sex trafficked. You guys are threatening to murder fucking people, so she'll do this shit, and then going, oh, she's willing. I'm like that's fucking nuts. I'll kill you. Look at this girl wanting to have sex with me. She's a freak. I will murder your daughter. I'll murder your son. Look at this girl who wants to have sex with me. She's such a freak. Oh my God. And the, and the kids watch the sheriffs over and over again. Let the bad guys get away. And in the end of the day, these kids are going, how the fuck are the bad guys getting away? And you go, well, ask that one kid who listened to the sheriff say they were going to fix it after he fucking saw the sheriff try to take his pants off and fucking participate. Right. Right. Those kids can tell you why it's not any better. Mm -hmm. Well, the sheriff, the sheriffs don't actually, if, 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 if all of the neighbors are involved or there's the, the community in the area or whoever's all the witnesses are involved in the situation and the sheriff knows that they fucking participate. Right. And, and you know, at the very least, even if, if they weren't participating, they're condoning it. You know? Well, there's a, covering it up so it can happen again as a sheriff. You don't think the So did I tell him every kid that was here or did I just give him the one that they had to see because that's the one they saw? Now we get somewhere. I only told him about that kid because the kid fucking was on the floor right there freaking out. Mm -hmm. When the sheriff came in and the African guy was coming in, my neighbor guy to fucking participate, but so bought the house from, from, from my neighbor, uh, Brent, you know, come in to participate in rape. There's a kid fucking laying on the ground. Well, fuck. 
Now I got to make a big deal about that kid, but I made a big deal about that kid. So the other kids could listen to what happens. What are we doing for that kid? Right. You guys that are friends of that kid that were in my house too. What did the sheriffs do for that boy? What did the military do for that boy? Right. Oh man. Like those kids will say, they actually asked him to participate in rape. Like the sheriff was standing in the room and Jerry was, it was having the kid rape a woman, an unconscious woman. Well, shit. Those kids, those li- their lives might be in danger. Yeah, especially so now, if they... now, now, now you now you think so? You, now we're going to have American children growing up, going. I am literally a, a, a target of the the military, the FBI. If they know, I, I watch them kill people. We saw that people get killed. We saw people. Get, we heard rape, torture. If they find out it's me, they're going to do it to my mom. They're going to do it to my sister. And no, I never trust America. Never trust the military. You know, see what I'm saying? They they they're yeah. raising these children that way. Like you guys are fucking nuts. The end of them. Oh man! And, and, that, but, that, you know, that, you, and, and you might be able to set up a situation where you can bl- uh, gas like that one kid laying on the floor, right? At Stockholm Syndrome, so he trusts you and you gain and looks good on the you know public eye. It's the kids. It's the kids you don't. Know, you guys never know they're here. Is the is what you guys don't are not accounting for. Yeah, but but again, that goes back to you think about raising that mentality of you know, not trusting America, not trusting the military, that only furthers to help. But just to say, what, what, what does my neighbor Jerry and Matt and the sheriffs and the, and the military they kept, what, is, what do they get for, for, for setting up other soldiers to be murdered? What do they get for, for, for creating counterintelligence for foreign countries? What do they get? Right. All, they, they, all they ever show up with was, is prostitutes, children, and drugs. What are they getting for this counterintelligence? Because the organizations uh, that need that counterintelligence sell drugs, children, and prostitutes. And the military is always showing up with drugs, children, and prostitutes. Huh. Directly we, funding those organizations. Right, well, you give me counterintelligence for some drugs, children, and prostitutes. And how did the fucking military get them? Right. Yeah, who's, who's selling those wares and fares to them? Yeah, yeah, but it's 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 just really scary because it seems like such big of an issue that it's near impossible to fix almost. But like, well, I don't the know. Only... Here's the thing: uh, you guys are you, everybody in the room knows an, an American soldier. Ask him. What, do you guys have any policies or procedures for taking care of this shit? And if so. Why are we not following through and covering them up and ignoring those laws so counterintelligence can be made? Why are we setting up the military on purpose? Right. Why are we making fake heroes in the military? You show up to my house, you participate in gang rape, Biggie, torture, and then we make you a hero in the military. So that before you get to the Middle East or before the rest of your unit, I can go, hey man, Ernie, you, you know Biggie, the hero of your unit? You want to see some videos of them? I'll show you something. You got to swear to God never to speak about it. What did I do? Right. I just put distrust in your entire unit. And you don't even know it. You're now. I'm going now. Now, Biggie. This is our Biggie. If, if if Ernie ever finds out I told you this stuff, he might kill you. Look, people died. Nobody. The reason that person's not in trouble because people died so he could do this. Enjoy your enjoy your tour overseas. Jesus, yeah. <laughs> oh man. Enjoy your tour overseas. People died so that so that so that Ernie could gather this counterintelligence for criminal organizations. Enjoy your tour overseas with Ernie. Oh, you go, man. fuck, before you even left. Before you even left, you're going, fuck, is my teammate going to kill me? And you're t- like, I'm not even going, does, does Biggie trust me? Does Biggie not trust me? I'm not questioning it because I don't know Ernie showed you those fucking videos of me raping and pillaging. Me, me setting up other members of the military to be murdered. So I set up other members of the military to be murdered. You're a member of the military in my own unit. Am I going to set you up next? Right. Uh, so you see, just what, gotta I, see what Ernie did for your unit? And, right? and I don't even know Ernie fucking spoke to you. I don't know what Ernie showed. I don't fucking even know. I don't even know who Ernie is. I don't even know Ernie exists. Not only that, you're setting up your whole troop for failure. 
because there's no synergistic, you, you know, it, it's just setting it up for failure. I just so like so fascinating, so fascinating. It's five D chess where it feels like the other side is five moves ahead. Like Jesus. Well, I mean, when you when you have your chain of command helping the other team, it's hard to it's hard to keep up. Yeah. How, why can't we win a war in Afghanistan? Let's ask the chain of command at Lewis McCord how many fucking counterintelligence agents they made for Afghanistan. Did you see, by the way? Speaking of, that America sent two B-52 bombers over Iran as a warning. I think that's pretty interesting with the, all the things that you talk about. Is that about. real? Well, that's what I'm saying. Is it real or is it in, like another detail? Towards the in- uh, are we point? running up on the anniversary of Soleimani or anything like that? Is that real? I don't even know if that person's a real person. I played games. You play war games? Uh, I did war games with Soleimani on a on a in a video game. It, it was, it's a character in a video game. Is that person real? Mm, mm. Sorry, I had to swallow. It was really fizzy. Oh. Yeah. Um. But yeah, same thing like with what you said with um Jeffrey Epstein. But real quick, sorry, my mind is kind of spinning through different topics. But something with that, too, is, you know, we talked about before, you think about um, Metal Gear Solid, right? So in in the second one, you play as Raiden, which is a character who's like a newbie, um, basically. And at first, the, the player is tricked into thinking it's Snake from the first game. Well, it turns out the whole second game is a psychological operation on Raiden. It's an exact replica of the events from the first game. It, it, that's like my life. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. And so it's almost like, you know, they're, they're putting him through this, this operation to see if anyone put in the right scenario can become Solid Snake or a super soldier, right? But then literally you find out every character in his life that he thought he knew, his girlfriend, the colonel, everyone is fake, ran by an AI. <laughs> Ain't that interesting? What? Yeah, like, oh man, it's almost like exactly what's what you're talking about, right? It's like setting up these psychological operations for these soldiers or even children, where it's like, if we can put them in the right scenario, can we make them whatever we want? I can't. I mean, if the, the think how retarded the special forces are, how ignorant they are. You think my information going out? You get other countries want want me to move to their country to get the rest of it, and the special forces like just <laughs> ego. Yeah, they're the greatest. Yeah. Thing. Special forces, you guys are the greatest thing in the world. Remember that. You can never make a fucking mistake. You guys, are, you? you guys are you guys are fucking flawless. Right, then they never. We got, we got fucking. You know, it's so interesting. Special forces is so good at their fucking job. They can't even stop their own team from sex trafficking and funding money to crim- to their enemy. You know, the special forces of Lewis McCord. There's a fucking unit there, and they didn't have the intelligence to stop their own fucking base from funding their enemy. How fucking retarded is your special forces unit? How fucking how fucking in the know is your fucking chain of command? Uh, you, your, your, your officer of your fucking unit didn't know shit what was going on in real, but doesn't know fucking nothing. Right. And the least educated, the least fucking, per, the person with the least amount of fucking knowledge, but you know, knows how to pull a fucking trigger mm-hmm. is your fucking CEO is, is your, is your officer. The person like your psychological operations. So the person who knows the least about them is in charge. That doesn't right. seem fucking weird. Like, Biggie, you don't know shit about special special ops. I'm going to give you a certificate and certify you like you fucking do, and I'm going to put you in charge of the special forces at Lewis McCord, okay? Right. Oh, man. Right, and this is like, now, everybody's looking at your certifications as special forces. The whole base is looking to you. Oh, you can't make a mistake. 
you know, who yeah, must yeah, be the they're, greatest they're, for that Yeah, position. They're, they're looking at you going, well, fuck. That, that guy's got our back. He's doing, a, he's doing a great job. We don't have to worry about nothing. These special forces got us covered. Not really. We made sure somebody who didn't know what the fuck they were doing was put in charge. The whole fucking yeah. place. The whole fucking base. The whole the fucking base. Actor, pretty much. The whole fucking base. You don't know shit about unconventional warfare tactics to infiltrate your base? You don't know anything about, like, it's a fucking base. Like, you're supposed to have somebody that knows about this shit. You don't have nobody? When did the right. when did the person not have that was supposed to know about this shit stop doing this fucking job? You've just been filling boots for 15 years? 15 fucking years. The person who's supposed to do this job has oh, not been man. doing it. They've just been filling the shoes. That don't yeah, seem how much it spread in that 15 years? Jesus. It's, it's a it's a it's an interesting fucking situation. Like they don't like I don't like I can die tomorrow or whatever. I don't think they realize the amount of fucking damage they've done to them the the the, the legacy of the military. And people don't you know when when you're a grunt, you're you're just a you're just a fucking cannon fodder. You don't think about shit. Yeah, you don't think about tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Right, we're not thinking about tomorrow. The fucking whole military in every fucking state. They're like, our job is to think tomorrow. Protect our future. Well, what are you doing? Nothing. No. Right. Have you picked up the book that trains you on how to protect tomorrow? Uh-uh. Are you well, going what to? What tomorrow uh-uh. are they protecting? Yeah, uh-uh. I'm not going to pick up the book. I'm just gonna... Is it cool if I just fucking pretend? And the chain of hand going, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Biggie, pretend. Because then everybody else will think your pretending is what you're supposed to do. Now the whole fucking no base follow. is trained pretending... Right, they're doing something, but it's not the right thing because you were pretending. Right, same thing with you know. Do you want to do you want to be a hero for the rest of your troop? Do you want to be looked at as a hero, someone that other soldiers can follow in the footsteps of? Oh my God, and it's like, how do you? The only thing that I can think of, the only solution, I guess, would be. To have something that can, I, I don't know, something without a body, essentially, to, to kill, to keep this stuff raw. out and about. You know what I mean? Raw. Yeah. It came raw. Yeah, um, some but, uphold the truth. But the, the, the problem is, no, like, they, they don't care about the truth. They don't care. They care about, I'm, I've, I've never seen, like, you think about what we're showing the country. We tell the country there's this brotherhood, there's this shit. Right? And we put it in the news. We talk about it all the time. And then we go, but in real life, kids, look, they're all stabbing each other in the back. In real life, they're all fucking trafficking drugs, f- f- prostitutes. Like, literally, like, what's th- in today in, 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 um, in, um, the United Kingdom, which is fi- pretty interesting. There, there's kids in the United Kingdom and different countries. They talk about our military bases and the number one tourist attraction of our military bases. Brothels and strip clubs, sex trafficking. Like it's like, what? Do, what why do you have a, a military? Why, why do? Why do you have a strip club near Fort Hood? And you literally, well, some of our soldiers like cocaine and prostitution. You know what? And you think about that. That's like a common kind of like theme, almost like it's almost like a, a military meme. It's like they, you know, prostitutes and drugs. When you go overseas, like what? Where? You know, even in media, where do you see the military men go to when they're overseas? Oh, you know, some seedy bar, you know, they're, they're getting drunk off their ass. They take some woman home that, you know, they don't know. They've never met. She's just some who's, who, local who's tra- I think about fucking crazy. So there's, I, sh- I don't know where, I should not, not where the person is, but I know a, a girl who you're talking about being picked like a very beautiful woman uh, uh, who, who picked up military men and I learned about roofing from her it's like 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 what what are you doing and like like can, can explain it to me like I just I'm, I got autism like I'm, I'm not like I, I'm fucking got problems like I just want to know shit I want to know shit please teach me shit and then there's just like oh yeah man we learned this from some guy you, you, you can take a military guy roof him and and, and um you know, play while they're roofied in their ear, gunfire in battle, and then and then give out commands and orders that their actual chain of command would give, and get replies. Like they'll actually yeah. tell you, like you know, 
like what they're what the what, what in this situation what what do you do? Well, we don't know. Let's like we'll play the command while he's roofied, and the guy, blah, 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 yeah. you know, it's oh, like you, a serum. Yeah, um, kinda, but they don't really. There's no really they, such thing as a true serum. They're just blab. You know, they you basically roofied them instead of raping them. You put them in the situation where they think they're reliving the battle or reliving some training or reliving now. Right. We're going to give you some secret codes and some secret intel. Okay, I told you them. Did you memorize them? Biggie, I'm going to... Listen, listen, I, I've roofied you as a member of the military, a prostitute. Now, I just gave you uh, the passwords. Right? I'm playing the battle. Da, da, da. I gave you the clearance passwords and stuff. Do you remember them, Biggie? And you go, I didn't fucking hear them. And I play the battle again. And I'm like, you got to concentrate and listen to them over the battle, Biggie. And I play it again in your ear. Did you hear them? Well, I think I did. Okay, I'm going to play it again. Biggie, listen. The, what, are the, what are the clearance codes? What's the passphrase? Ciphers? Whatever intel I need. What is, what is it? Do you remember? Do you rem Okay, I remember. Do you remember, Biggie? Oh, no. Okay, tell me so I know that you remember. Hey, Ernie, this is the code to get into that security in the on the base. Oh, my God. Yeah, you're, you're basically siphoning subconscious information. Okay. So literally, I'm like, Biggie, um, I just told you the password to get into the fucking door, the key, the key to get to get in the arm, whatever it is, wherever it is, and plant a phone, plant listening devices. All right, I just I just told it to you to get in there, and I, I only I want it so that I can plant listening devices. Have somebody go somewhere they're not. Tell me what it is, Biggie. I don't. I, I, I didn't hear you. Let me play the war again. And okay, because you got to be able to remember this in the heat of the battle, Biggie. Right. Right. We, I, you remember when you were crawling through barbed wire uh, under barbed wire during boot camp, we're fucking blasting rifles and then barking out orders, right? Distracting you with the rifles and the barbed wire to see if you'd remember the orders. Do you remember the codes? State dependent memories, almost. It is a state dependent memory. Do you right? We fucking trained it into you as a state dependent memory. Now you're in battle, Biggie. You're fucking roofied, and you think you're in fucking battle. Give me the numbers. Okay. Um, yep, I did remember. You're right. Yep, I okay. remember. I did hear him. I didn't even fucking tell you any number. I didn't tell you shit. I just said, I gave it to you. Now, do you remember? You go, what? And like another time, like different people, like not even numbers. Okay, I gave you the information. Biggie, now repeat it to me. So I know that you're going to get it to where it needs to go. Right. Yeah, that, oh man, that is awesome. But at the same time, I could see how it could be used for not good. But this is like uh, uh, so another like so you know get into this stuff. And I had I had a uh, 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 a military member torture me for some for some um, intel counter intel. But he didn't know I was already told to give him fake counter intel. Mm. Okay, you know, so you came here to torture me, like you, 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 you came in my house, and we had the little, you know, whatever discrepancy. I'm a civilian. Hey, don't kill me! Now I'm tied in a chair, and you're asking me for information. And you go to your chain of command, and going, "I got the intel. He broke." But but you don't know the intel that uh, that I gave you was was wasn't was real. Yeah, was now planted. we just wanted to know where you. We just want to know who sent you. Oh wow! So when they come, you can just mm. yeah. Where did you All come? Yeah, yeah. Where did you? I told you. That's what I broke and I told you. But when did I tell you? When did I give you this count? When did I break and tell you what you think you broke me and told to tell you? When did you break me to tell you this? Right. <laughs> oh man, that's awesome to know to just think about. Just like, oh man. The face reminds me of era of tech, but I remember. It, you know, him laughing, or, you know, laughing because they'd broken me. After rape and torture and all, they'd broken me. And I remember them laughing, like, ha, ah, ha, yada, yada. And I'm like, yeah, it's fake intel. Just in my brain, like, oh, let me go. But I'm literally in my brain, I'm crying on the face, and in my brain, I'm going, they bought that? Like, I'm like, that shit worked? Yeah. They didn't go, like, no, Biggie, tell me the fucking real shit. No, they went, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, joke's on me, guys, yep. Like, I was like, that shit fucking worked. Like, you just oh, tell them some shit, and they're like, they're like, yep, we got it. Again, because they've been trained not to follow training. You know? 
not to pick up every detail. It's so, like, uh, yeah. It's so nuts. It is. It's just so fucking nuts. So then you think about, it's just so nuts. Like, you know, people, you know, like, but you have to sit back and look at every perspective. Just because you're an honest member of the FBI or a dishonest member of the FBI or, or, or any other organization doesn't mean your perspective is the only one. And therein lies the fucking problem with, with training of the situational awareness with the FBI and the military. Right? Mm-hmm. They come into this building for situational awareness. Their perspective is the only one that counts. They're right. not, you know, but the problem is when I come in as an FBI agent or the military thinking my perspective is the only one that counts because of my ego, well, then I forget to go, well, is there somebody else's perspective hiding behind the couch? Because if, if somebody's hiding the band, their perspective fucking counts now. Especially, you know, if you have members who, yeah, are like through their psychiatric evaluation, you can tell, oh, this person has a bit of a bigger ego that they that they feed on. Oh, man. Same thing with Edward Snowden or Bob Lazar. You know, yeah. these people are... You know, in their psychology, they're the type to go and blab about all sorts of stuff. So let's, you know, seed them with this information to an extent. You think my, it's so funny you say that. Like in real life, Edward Snowden and um, and, and places, their psychology literally tells them they'll repeat anything you say because they got that that they're infatuated with that hero complex. Mm-hmm. And so what, what, what you know, it's, it it it. it, it in, in my in my psychological evaluation I had to go sign up for the Marines and stuff like that and you get all you, it, you get all you get passed around all these different places it literally Martin will let you torture him to death if we need to, if, we, if we ask him for the right reason they'll allow you to torture him to death man and, and, and that's a very powerful tool to allow somebody to, to, to know that you will, you, you, Biggie, you can torture me to death. So you come to my house and you torture me and then I succumb. And because you think that uh, uh, I'm, uh, you know, you've read in my psychological evaluation, I will resist until I'm, uh, I'm, I'm about dead. I will literally right. resist till I'm about dead. So you keep going till you think I'm dead or till I'm on the cusp of death. Right. And, and, and you don't walk away till I'm on the cusp of death. And when you walk away when I'm on the cusp of death, that's when the kids get free. That's when the ladies get free. Right? I, I didn't save their lives while I was alive. I did it when I was dead. Right. Self sacrifice. How did you how did you they asked, how did you how did you get those kids out of there? I died. That's, that's how, how do I how do I how do I make you take your eyes off me? Your job is to keep your eyes on me if I'm alive. The only time you're allowed to, your orders, the only time I, and I know, the only time you're allowed to take your eyes off of me is if my heart stops beating. I know that. Right. As you're pummeling me in my head, I know. The only time you can take your eyes off of me is when my heart stops beating. When you're stomping on my kidney and my liver, choking me, punching me. I know when my heart stops beating, the blows will stop coming. When the blows stop coming, kids get free. Isn't that weird? You have to die. So they'll leave you alone? Yeah. So something I wanted to ask about that is, like you said, the organization of the information that makes up like our consciousness, our energy, and the things that get uh, added to it, so to say, while living. I wonder, does that mean you know, if if your energy does get recycled here, like you, you don't go to the beyond. Mm. So it, stay, it stays with you in the next life, right? It, it stays a part of you. So is there any way to recall that information almost? So, I, so this is a very interesting take. So, so um, does it get recycled? Does it get stuck? Because people ask me my, my ideas of hell and things like that, and you read the descriptions, it's Earth. And then yeah. I, uh, I, I had a, I had meltdowns really bad. So this guy Ken, 
showed up and forcibly, you know, gaslighting my wife, lying to my wife about being a good person to, to move us to Ocean Shores. I didn't want to fucking go, you know, because, mm. you know, we're going there and people are breaking in and this, it's just a fucking bad place to be. A lot of sexual exploitation in Ocean Shores, like fucking just the police department there. They, to, in order to maintain tourists, they have to cover up so many. They actually have a budget like your daughter got raped as a four year old. We have a budget to pay you off in Ocean Shores, but not just one four year old victim. Like we can pay off 100 sexual sexual exploited victims in Ocean Shores. We have a budget to keep 100 victims quiet a year. That's fucking nuts. Yeah, they have a budget. Oh. Ocean Shores has a budget in their tourism to keep a hundred victims quiet to, so it doesn't disrupt the rest of the tourism. So I'm not trying to be rude or nothing, but that's, you know, tourism yeah. is other, like the good people's li- li- livelihood, right? So you go out and, you know, and 99 other people do dumb shit and there's not a hundred victims. Well, then you eat into my tourism. I, maybe I'm a fucking pizza guy or, you know, I own a candy machine or you, you just cost right. me my livelihood. So they have, but you know, you know, they don't do that to go, we're going to do this to make sure bad guys get away. They're like, we need to make sure everybody in the town still eats. Yeah, it fuels the local economy. Yeah, you know, to, like, you know what I mean? People don't understand that. We have to protect tourism or these people will starve to death. Right. So, yeah, real quick, interesting with that, um, the Quinault Casino. <laughs> um, <laughs> Dude, I got yeah. so many videos in there. Oh, my God. Yeah, because I remember seeing it on the uh, Bud Brothers flicker. Those are crazy shit. So because I do weird stuff, I already know the tribal elder for the Quinault. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm just a weird kid. So I asked. You don't have to tell I, me. I, I, I'm like, I, I have OCD really, really bad. You know, my, my wife is good because I'm, I'm weird. I'm like, this girl, we just went to the HR. She got My wife's getting hired at your casino. These people are, you know, thinking they finessed the thing. You know, I'm not sure if you had anything to do with it or the people – you know, telling my wife they had some. I'm not sure who got her the job there, but I'm just letting you know. Um, we, we've, we, you know, my, my, I have a lot of Native American information, so I've come across the Quinault throughout my years going in and out of there. Me and my wife were there as children. Uh, like, we had a house there at one time. Hmm. Um, so I know, I, you know, I know the area. You know, I know, the, I know the things. Like, there's pictures of like you go there now when I was skinny, and they're like, we don't know who the fuck you are. You know, people like here's a picture of me. With a with an old cannery hat with twenty five extra pounds, I'm like, oh shit, that's Martin. Yeah, yeah, but you had no idea who I was with my beard. Like I've been sitting here in a month talking to you, Biggie, and you, you thought my name was Tom because somebody else told you it was Tom. So we've been having conversations for a whole fucking month. Mm-hmm. You didn't even know I was like, 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 like you see my this is my picture. They're like, oh, you're fucking Martin. Like, like, Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, dang, you look good, man. <laughs> but I, I, I told them I have a problem where. Um, me and my wife are getting attacked all the time. Like, I'm getting beaten. People are trying to murder me. They, they, they're they threatening to murder my wife's kids. And our kids, we've had babies stolen from us. I talked to the elder of the Quinault. They're threatening to murder our children. And uh, Every time I park out here where there's not a lot of people, you know, I get really, I get hurt really bad. People get hurt really bad. Can I park in the handicap stalls? Or, or, uh, he, he was like, and literally, the elder was like, well, we, we have actually parking stalls for elders. You can, you know, you can park in those stalls and um, people are going to bitch, which is going to cause a scene, which means there'll be eyes on you. So nobody will get hurt. Mm, so I would, park, I would park in the elder stall and literally pissy ass people would freak out about it and the security would get involved. And I was like, man, this guy was pretty fucking smart. Like he already knew, like you park in the stall. Yeah. Cause I was like, I'm, I'm going to park in the handicap stalls for the customers to go gamble, but I'm not actually gambling. My wife worked there. So I'm just letting you know, you know what I mean? So if you don't yeah, want me yeah. to park there, yeah. And he was like, no, he's literally the guy, the person was like, park in the, in the elders parking for the, to, to gamble. It's, it's I'm like, uh, he's like, it's, it's, it's on camera. Like the cameras are there to protect our elders. It'll make a fucking scene. If something goes down, like everybody will be watching. Uh, and I was like, all right, cool. And so I parked there the first fucking day and sure as shit, man, it was a huge deal. <laughs> so I, you know, I do my weird thing and you know get my communication out and we're like, hey, bro, people are freaking the fuck out. And I'm like, yeah, we know. <laughs> I'm like, you know, I'm like, well, the, you know, security came out and people were bitching and it's co- literally, I'm like, it cost you like five hundred dollars in labor. Yeah, just for, right. Just for, just for this first incident, like, because I'm weird with numbers. I'm like, 
you know, you had this person there, this person there, this yada, yada. It's like 500 bucks in labor to deal with this shit. And he's like, yeah, tomorrow go ahead and park in the stall, in the, in the elder stall. He's like, go ahead and do it every day forward. And I'm just thinking, I'm like, tomorrow's going to be 600 bucks because it's going to be more people that are like, he fucking did it again. I'm like, by the yeah. by five days in, I'm like, we're going to be in this like $2,000 a pop. And you're going to have, <laughs> you're going to, you're going to have me do this every fucking day. Yeah. So every day, like it, it was like, it was a huge fucking deal. Like they had literally they had security. Like it was a huge deal. Like get them out of the stall. And they, they couldn't figure out what, like they kicked me out of the stall and tell me I couldn't be in the stall. And somehow in the paperwork and shit would get overridden. So I could be back in the stall, but they didn't know I had <laughs> somebody from the elder. Like an elder was like, fix it, but don't tell nobody. <laughs> yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Like, Oh, Fix it, man. but don't say shit. <laughs> I'm like, this asshole for the second week is in the elder Oh, spot. but anyway, it got like, yeah, it got to, it got to be like months. Like he's still fucking doing it. And I, I'm oh, thinking, man. like in my head, I'm like, this has got to be like five thousand dollars, you know, uh, every few days. But with, literally, because they were freaking out. Like people were like the the other uh, people were like, well, we're not going to come gamble here. We're, we're, literally, I had people like, we're, we're leaving the Quinault tribe if you don't fix this. Those are just for Quinault elders. Only the yeah. elders. And I like, saw I saw someone, uh, oh, I can't, Lorna or something like that. I Yeah, I saw, she seemed to be one of those people that was very, very upset by it. Yeah, they're like, these are just for the elders. And I, I'm, I, I'm just like, I don't care what you're saying anymore because an elder's already told me I could, like, the big person. And other people understand uh, hierarchy in Native Americans, so they have all these people. But then you do have older Native Americans. Just what they fucking say is the rules. End of story. And that, I'm sure that's why they were so upset too, is because they understood the hierarchy, but didn't understand where you fell in it. You know, I, I don't. I, it was like a, somebody at the very top said I could park there, so I kept, like they even gave me. A, I even got a restraining order. And um, I shit you not, they served me a restraining. <laughs> think about this shit. They served me a restraining order, so I call the elder, and I'm like, I got a fucking restraining order that says if I pull in your parking lot again and I park in your elder's parking spot, the police are going to come and arrest me. Oh man! And so I, I, he says, go, go fucking park. What? I said, go park. Okay. So it's my. I don't know if it was my wife's lunch or some shit. So. I go, I go park, and uh, they they uh, they call the police, and it's a big old deal to escort me off off the property. And um, so I, I I tell the elder like your security came, they called the police to escort me off the property, and literally go fucking do it again tomorrow. And the, so the, the police come again to remove me again, and eventually, this is when shit clicked. The police said. I know you guys are having me fucking remove him, but somebody above you is telling him he can come back. Can you fix that shit so I don't have to waste my time? You're telling me as the parking lot security he can't be here, but somebody above you guys told me to leave him alone. <laughs> and, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> thank you for my restraining order. Yep. See you guys tomorrow. <laughs> you know, I think that you know. You think about training, like the, 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 the you know, Native Amer they, they they pay people and they have people that manage uh, uh, human resources and job retention and look at all that shit. I'm sure it was a massive learning experience. Because I told the you know I told the elder, if I'm being harassed, I have autism, I have meltdowns. The person already knew me. I got I went to Ocean Shores and hung out on their Quinault reservation and and and, and things like that as a kid. Because I have meltdowns, they take me there to freak out in the woods for a few days you know right. so i'm going to freak out and they're like you know, they're like well no, when you just freak out you literally just point out problems that nobody else saw this is what the person said they're like when you freak out you're like you know this window's cracked and this shit is thick so and i didn't really think about it so they pissed me off and literally by by like a weekend the elder was like you see this email he emailed me so he's like these are gut this is grass in the gutters that all of our customers have seen for the year that our, our maintenance team has been taking care of it that we didn't know existed until you freaked out. I was like, these fuckers can't even clean the grass out of their gutters. They're like, they're like here's an email uh, 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 and some videos of some rats, that barge rats in the back that we've been asking our maintenance to take care of so women can take their children out there and not worry about getting sick. Our guests have been complaining for over a year while 
our maintenance has said it's already taken care of, and we haven't got any pictures from our guests. And here you are with fucking videos of shit all over the place proving our customers were telling the truth. Right. You were a valuable resource to them. Yeah, because yeah, before they had a hundred customers complain about, you know, some, some you know, barge. It's just it's the ocean, right? Mm-hmm. And, and, and every customer was wrong. You know, if you got you got thousands of people. You know, a few hundred of them are gonna make some shit up. There's this bar. You know, some places you put. There was a hair in my food. I want a free dinner. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. There yeah. Was, I want a free night, and they go, "It's fucking whatever. It's not real." Well, uh, mm-hmm. here's some videos. It was real, and then they go, "Well, thank you, Martin." But I did right. that the whole fucking thing. I'm like, "There's a lump here." Which if I was an old person. Like I'm like, I walked in the track. My, we spent uh, Christmas. Walk the track. I drag my walk the whole track. Make click check and shit. I'm like, this doesn't have the ADA width for for your elders who are in wheelchairs. And they were like, well, we're, it's a native it's a native reservation. We don't have to meet ADA laws. And I go, well, the, it's not about the ADA laws. Right. It's, about, it's, it's about, about making sure your elders who spend money in your casino can get in your casino to spend money. Right. And they went, huh. Yeah. Yeah. Before we don't do ADA, but now we do. Yeah, now they thought do. they thought, oh yeah, we're we're cheating the system by our. No, personal. they didn't think they were cheating the system. They're just like it's it, you know it costs money. AD, you know, look out that right. shit. That's like, what I mean by cheating the system, like having to not have expenses that would normally be there legally, like required. You know. Yeah. Boop, boop, boop. Yeah, so like you know, so do you think of the, the 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 elder was like we would have to pay somebody to go through this who knows all this shit. And I went through, I'm like, you're missing a, you're missing a fire head here. You're missing an extinguisher over here. You don't have ADA, the 36 inch width between the casino thing here. Your carpet is fucking damaged over here and everybody's ignoring it. So somebody's going to trip and hurt themselves. Right. Like I went through the that whole, cost a lot. yeah, yeah. Like I'm like, I'm so nuts. I ordered food from the restaurant. I'm like, I'm like this wasn't, uh, at the temperature to keep it from getting a foodborne illness, like I was like, I, like, I was. But at the, at the same time, at the same time, I was doing that stuff. I took pictures of their like they had a uh, you know sculptures and all, you know I brought a lot of people there. Yeah, I bet. that was a pain. In the, like people like 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 because I have a lot of followers. You know, people are like are, are they going to throw you out of the cas- trying to move you from the casino today? I'm like I don't know. You should show up and find out. Yeah, it's like a nice little piece of drama too, almost. Yeah. show up and find out and I oh, like you know because I do these videos like I'm doing right now yeah uh, 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 but when I'm on the beach it's not a it, I, I do a quick 60 second clip but after I've worked out hour, uh, you know an hour's worth of cryptography but you can hear me do it you can hear me like okay like uh, you know uh, I, I, some kid was like walk, walk, in, walk on water Jesus walked on water and I'm like well the sun walks on water it's a parable but I was like I can walk on water so I did a thing where, 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 where the when the tide is going out the way the, the sandbar is eroded you can walk on it and then you walk behind me there's nothing for you to stand on it's a mm-hmm. tiny right you know like you know the yeah. bridge is falling you go you walk with the steps as they erode away I just right. <laughs> literally I'm like just walking on water I'm like come behind me guys and they're like we can't. What are you standing on? I'm like, I'm walking on water. I'm standing on the sandbar. There was a road, like literally the way the wave comes, it cuts the, cuts it away. Literally. Yeah. You can watch the wave cut the sandbar away. So you, like you just watch the cut and you can walk before the cut and everybody before the cut is walking on water. Cause the water's this high above the sand. Everybody right. behind the cut is sinking in the water because there's nothing to make, give the illusion of walking on water. Right. So then we went to, uh, the Quinault RV Park, which is one of the most beautiful places for for eagle watching and just shit. Yeah. And um, there was a little tiny cutout, and um, it took me forever to figure out the right time of day and, and, and um, the right tide, you know, basically to, 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 to have a little short one. So it was like it was like uh, twenty feet. Literally, so I have a I have a video on my on, I don't know if it's on this one or my old Instagram account of a family walking on water because they were like what are you, like what are you doing I'm like because they were on vacation they're like what are you doing I'm like I'm trying to I walked on water over at the casino but I'm trying to find a smaller place 
so some kids can do it, basically. Right. And they're like, well, you know, how long is like how long is it going to take you? Like maybe five minutes. I'm like, well, I'm not really sure. I'm going to walk up and down this whole beach all day, every day, till I figure it out. Like until I see the spot. And, and they're like, okay, whatever. So um, it was like two or three days went by, and um, there was a cut right when you literally right when you park, you go over the way that in a, a, an elder had to set the logs there. So you think about main, maintenance of the pro, of the the reservation or the resort. The way the yes. logs were laid, they were laid so that the water would cut away, so that you would have a like a twenty foot spot to walk on water, so you could oh. but to cross. Now we're getting some. So somebody made it so the elders could walk from one part of the beach to the other. So it was like a kind of like a V. So this beach, you had no way to access this beach unless that invisible bar was under the water. So timing. So they made it like that. So uh, I I got it and I videotaped a a, a, a family doing it. And then, you know, for, for a few weeks or months or I don't know how long, people would show up and do it. Yeah, that's awesome. But my thing was like, my thing's, I'm going to post it. I'll post you guys doing it. I'll give you my handle on my Instagram. But you guys can't um, tell anybody. Uh, you know, you can show them the video. So, you you know, Bluetooth, you vid- Bluetooth you the video. But don't tell them where you got it. Everybody has to guess. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Make it a, a, a hunting, cryptography, look for it type of deal. Yeah, right, right. It's pretty it's like you want to show them the results so that they can find out the process for themselves. Yeah. So I did this. Um, I did a, I did a, a different place. So, you know, the, 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 there's a place with the, uh, different f- fields of Aurora. So I literally, so the, the fields of Aurora, does anybody know what the fields of Aurora is? And I, I'm, I'm hoping I'm saying that right. The fields of Aurora. It's where the, where, the, where God touches where God touches Earth, right? where the where the where the heavens touch the t- touch the Earth. And I shit you not, like I it took me years to figure this out. So the, it, it, there's there's uh, uh, fields like alfalfa, barley, wheat, grass, just anything, and mm-hmm. something about it literally has a body of light, just like appear like a, like an angel or God walking on the beach, all by itself. And I figured it was after a low tide, a high tide had come in and it was low tide and the, the tide went out so fast in my fields of Aurora that the gra- the sand was still wet. It was still cold. So it was wet. And then it froze making a, like, like a yeah, mirror. almost like, a, yeah, a prison like a grant out of sand dunes yeah. and grass. Yeah. Isn't that interesting that like glass, the way glass is made too? Yeah. So the, 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 it's really interesting. Like tide come in, the, 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 the water wet everything and the top of the sand, the, like we didn't have salt in it. It dried up and stuck on top of the grass. So the stem of the grass, like here's the base where the sand, yeah. is. the, 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 the ice was frozen up here as a sheet stuck up over here. Mm-hmm. And, and, um, in the right, the right spot, the way the sun hit that gl- that that piece of glass hovering above the sand, casts a reflection off the sand that looked like glass into the into the into the the, the you know shit in the air, the saline. Yeah. So I did. I, I that's, there we go. So I did a post about um. So all I see is salt water around me. So they're like, how how did that happen? I couldn't. I didn't have a, my my words in order, my speech to explain it. So I was like, all I see is saline water or salt water around me. I just kept repeating that phrase, and people were like, "We're never going to get the answer out of him." Like that's it. That's right. as good as it gets. But today, I'm today. I worked it out. Like, yeah, saline water around me. The ice stuck to the grass, and and, and you know, it was a few inches above the sand. The sand when it when it froze, it looked like a mirror. It made a mirror because of what was in the uh, you know the oil from fishing right. or you know whatever was in it. It made it look like glass. And then the sun shone through the through the through the the, the ice, cast a reflection on the onto the sand. And as the sun was moving in the sky, because of the saline, the humidity in the air, that body of light was casted right here in front of my face. But as the sun was setting, it appeared to be walking across the beach because it was just moving with yeah. the sunset. A natural monstrance, or you know, I call it the fields of aurora. It's my fields of aurora. It's weird too, like 
um, you think about like the yeah the fields of aurora, aurora borealis, the electromagnetic field. That's pretty interesting there. I got I got a lot of fights there. Damn. Oh, I put man. on my I put on my. Uh, so they were looking for kids. You know, I did a job where they were looking for kids. So I, I, ha I had, the, somebody gave me the ability to modify Google Maps, not just edit them. Like I could literally put a, like Biggie Smalls is now, like Puyallup is now Biggie Smalls. <laughs> like, <laughs> I could change the, like the, every, like I edit the entire thing on the internet for the whole world to see. So I edited it that my apartment complex, if you solved a, a, a puzzle, it wasn't public, but it was like, you know, like my house was anonymous EDU, my address here, anonymous EDU. And it, you, you, you follow that anonymous EDU and it led you to an apartment complex. It was like, you know, Martin's secret stash. But you had to you had to work through some cryptography, some puzzles that were hard but not hard. Like, you know, it was it was so that like if you stumbled across it on accident, you you would go, oh, this is I, I can't believe I stumbled across this. It's supposed to be hidden. You know what I mean? Because I bombard the Internet with so much shit. I used to bombard right. Google Maps and modify their maps so much like go, I would go hot, you know, 300 edits a day so that they didn't know, you know, then I could put Ernie sitting here and you wouldn't know what edit it was. You know what I mean? I did it for a month and you, so you, what edit is it? So if you came across it, you know, you would think you stumbled upon it on accident type of deal, like a psyop. If you stumbled right. upon it, it was on accident is what you were led to believe. And if you, if you didn't stumble upon it on accident is because some other shit led you there as if, right. as if you were some kid being led there. And goddamn, so many men showed up. It was fucking nuts. Man. Yeah, I bet all types, too. It was nuts. Um, oh, there was something else real quick. I'm starting to forget it again. Sorry, give me a sec here. That's all right, I get paid by the hour. <laughs> That's what I tell people at work too. Um, but you think, I, re I really think you, you think about um, how long this shit has been going on, like these abductions and these like. <laughs> fucking nuts, man! Oh, sorry, I just remembered. Um, so. I guess two things. One, I, I did want to, when, when I, when I did go to Washington, at least the one time I can remember, we'll go back to that. Um, but, um, I, I did remember you saying something about Tony, Tony Grout putting in, you and him had worked on some stuff or there was a tree at the old cannery. Where, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, I think a tree, a tree fell down in a storm, and um, he asked this guy Chris Nason. Uh, Chris Nason, a Mason in training. Chris Nason, a, 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 a Mason in training. Is it Chris Nason or Chris Mason? Uh, um, there's the Chris Nason, Nason and the Chris Mason. Familiar. Huh? For some reason, the name Chris Nason sounds really familiar. Oh, he, he, he's a big deal for the cannery. It was a big deal. I don't know if it is now, but the dude, like, I know a lot of people got credit for a lot of shit. Because but it was, because Chris left it. Yeah, he, he fuck, you know, like his fuck, like, I, 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 I watched this. Uh, I can't think of the person's name. Something Brown. Ran a circus or used to run a circus equipment or some shit like that. Literally, uh, Chris, Chris would do something, and and um, somebody like make, like you know Ernie would say, "Oh, you know, you know, this other brown guy did it." The guy's last name was Brown. I can't remember his first name. 